Uh, my name is Peter Kavanagh. I'm a DLP, Democratic Labour Party member for Western Victoria in the Victorian Parliament. Uh, I don't have scientific credentials. I have a lot of non-scientific academic credentials, but not scientific ones. All right. Well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'd like to ask is how did you become involved in the water fluoridation issue? And there's a second part, what actions have you taken to represent your constituents on this issue? Well, uh, as a member of the Democratic Labour Party, I feel democracy is important. And I do think that real democracy means local people deciding local issues. Uh, it's a much more democratic system, I think, if we have uh, people deciding for themselves, perhaps differently from other areas, uh, their response to issues like fluoride. Uh, if people decide at a local level, then more people get what they want than through any other means, you know, from a national system where the whole country is fluoridated or not fluoridated. Uh, as far as the issue of fluoridation goes, um, uh, on the, I became concerned through the democratic principle that reading pretty extensively I did become rather concerned about fluoride because um, I think there are reasons to believe that uh, it's not actually efficacious in terms of uh, tooth decay, preventing tooth decay, and that it could be uh, harmful in other respects as well to health. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of experts forming this opinion now, and uh, in Europe they're basically taking fluoride out of their water supplies to a large extent. I think it's an antiquated technology, basically, that could be quite harmful. Uh, and uh, I suspect we're probably better off without it. In terms of what I've done, I did uh, actually get a private member's bill passed the upper house of the Victorian Parliament at the end of 2007. And the private member's bill would have required the Victorian Government to obtain the consent of affected people before new areas, new parts of Victoria could be fluoridated. Uh, it passed the upper house, which was quite an achievement, but uh, the government, uh, I would say, probably sabotaged it in the lower house and saw that it didn't get anywhere there. Uh, so, unfortunately, it didn't become law, but uh, I feel there was something of a moral victory to get it passed in one house anyway. So what course of action would you recommend other politicians take if they are considering opposing mandatory, mandatory water fluoridation? Well, I think they should uh, come out in favour of uh, plebiscites as a condition to fluoridation. I think, generally speaking, that uh, if it is a requirement, most people will vote against uh, com compulsory fluoridation. There are good reasons to vote against it, if you've got the chance, and uh, I think politicians sh should support that, uh, support that view, and uh, they should tell members of their party and argue for that position within their own parties. So I have an ad adjunct to that question, which I'm going to ask. I almost didn't ask this, but I'm going to ask it. And I'm going to kind of put it a little bit more than is written on the page here because uh -huh. I represent mothers uh -huh. and there are many mothers that are pretty upset about this. Mm -hmm. So my question is, quite bluntly, are Australian politicians lacking the proverbial balls or spine to investigate, let alone oppose, the fluoridation issue? What are your thoughts on that? In a word, I think uh, probably yes, and I think uh, probably because uh, it's too easy to associate anti-fluoride people with a bit of a, an extremist element. Uh, and I think that kind of detracts from the credibility of it, unfortunately, and that's why probably a lot of uh, mainstream politicians don't want to get too involved in, in the issue. Then I would perhaps forward um, that if mothers are upset that their children are being poisoned without their knowledge because mm. politicians refuse to look at the science that's now available. If, if Europe have banned this as a banned neurotoxin mm. and Australia is hell-bent on it continuing mm. to fluoridate, haven't mothers got the right to be angry about this? I think you're, you're probably why, putting why the case a bit strongly. I think um, there That's are parts of Europe where they're taking it out or making it difficult to put in as well. The yeah. European Court has said that it can't be done uh, without the consent of affected people, I believe. Uh, now, as far as it being a poison goes, well, 
technically that's right, it is a registered poison. Neurotoxin. Uh, I wouldn't like to give the impression myself that we're all about to drop dead if we drink a glass of fluoridated water though. Uh, I think on the whole it's probably harmful to health, but probably not dramatically so. I think uh, we want to be a bit careful and we don't want to scare people. <laughs> so uh, I think you're better off without fluoride in the water, but uh, the scientific evidence is uh, not consistent. There are some studies that show there's some benefit, others show there's more danger than benefit. So uh, on the whole, I think uh, we'd be better without the fluoride, but uh, maybe put our, cal our cows rather calmly. I mean, in Europe, they, uh, <coughs> it's not hysteria about it, it's just a, a rational decision. Now on balance, it's better not to do it. So I think that's the right decision.